Hello, this is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodmo. This is Christopher Draves. This show is by fans for fans. And this show is brought to you by Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. You can get all of your hockey essentials, skate sticks, uh, blades, sharpened helmets, shoulder pads, gloves. Uh, you could get NHL jerseys from all the teams in the Midwest, and you can also get your jerseys personalized. And you'll you get great customer service. And you can also pick up your 2019-2020 Milwaukee Admirals jerseys. Go Admirals. All right. Hashtag Admirals50. Um, if you move, it's right above it. Yeah, I know, but I just had to throw the hashtag out there. This is a hashtag society now. See, yeah, I moved to give the props to the Admirals. Anyway, so uh, let's get into this uh, Predators Golden Knights game. Before that, uh, before the game, Daniel Carr was uh, placed on waivers uh, for reasons to send him to Milwaukee. What are you looking at? That thing you used to do last season. Oh yes. Never mind. Let's just keep it going. You said uh, Daniel Carr got sent to Milwaukee. Are uh, you going to break down this, the logistics of it? I'm going to let you read the stats while I get that. All right. Uh, the Predators outshot Vegas 39-35. Uh, uh, Face-off percentage was uh, 51% Vegas, uh, 49% uh, Nashville. Uh, both teams were one for on the power play. Uh, Nashville was one for five. Vegas was one for four. Uh, penalty minutes were uh, 20 uh, for Vegas and 18 for the Predators. Uh, hits were 41-28 in favor of the Golden Knights. Uh, block shots were 19-14 Predators. And giveaways were 11-3 Vegas. This was a 5-3 or 5-2 victory for the Predators. So that means the Golden Knights got slayed. Yeah, we brought it back for another year. Yeah. Damn sight. Okay, you give me that and carry your end of the show. All right, so this is where I step in. And we have scoring first for the Nashville Predators is Kyle Turris with his second with an assist from uh, Ryan Ellis, his fifth, and Grimaldi, his second. Then Mark Stone got his fifth on the power play with an assist from Cody Glass. And uh, Stasny, his third, and Glass is third. Uh, then Riley Smith got his fifth with an assist from uh, Marcheseau and Carlson. Marcheseau's third assist of the year, and Carlson's seventh. Then, um, Colton Sissons got his second of the year with an assist from Benino. Then Kelly Yarncroft got his first of the year with an assist from Arvidsson and Yossi. Arvidsson's third, Yossi's fourth. Uh, Phil Forsberg scored his fifth unassisted. And then on the power play, Nick Benino got his second of the year with an assist from Turris and Ellis. Turris is second, Ellis is sixth. Uh, I noticed something. Nomad Duchesne? Yeah, this streak is over, people. Duchesne did not get an assist tonight. But Forsberg did get a goal. <laughs> yeah, but this streak's over. Uh, Duchesne did not get an assist. In fact, Duchesne didn't do anything tonight, really. But I'm not going to yell at him because, well, he's been playing great for the first couple of games. He's bound to have an off night. He had four shots on goal, was 50% from the faceoff, had 15 minutes time on ice, and uh, five minutes on the power play time on ice. What's his plus minus, or you'll get into that? Plus one. So he was out there for a goal. Yeah, I assume so if he's been out there for 50 minutes. All right, so in net for Nashville was Pecorine. He stopped 33 of 34. Uh, even strength and was 0 and 1 on the power play. They, the, our penalty kill only allowed one shot. Um, and it went in. So he stopped 33 of 35 as a whole. Uh, he had a .943 save percentage, which is about... Pretty good. Um, in net for uh, Vegas was Mark Andre Fleury. He stopped uh, 34 of 39 with a save percentage of 0.872. Uh, 
You just you... reminded me of that rookie mistake, Flurry Head, where he tried uh, bouncing the puck off the boards to his own guy, but a predator intercepted it and put it in. Yes. Um, also, res referees tonight were Gene Hebert, not a fan, uh, Steve Corazon, and the uh, linesmen were uh, Ron Daisy and Tony Cicerello. Um, head coach for Vegas is Gerald Gallant. Head coach for Nashville is Peter LaViolette. Scratches today were Daniel Carr and Matt Irwin. Uh, Carr has not been assigned to Milwaukee yet. He's just He's... been uh, placed on waivers, right? Correct. Um, and then we had scratches today for Vegas was uh, Malcolm Subad, uh, Jake Bischoff, and Brendan Peary. So what was your opinion of tonight's game? I think they played well. My problem is if Vegas keeps playing the way they are, where they have more hits than shots, they're never going to win. Who, oh, Vegas? Yeah. They had 41 hits and 35 shots. Well, you're they're, they're a physical to... team, but I agree. You know, you got to be smarter when you're playing. You can't just play physical all the time. Because if you play physical, say the say you take the guy away and you move yourself out of the play, because that guy dished the puck off, now the puck's in the back of your net. Yeah. I'm just saying that's some that happens quite frequently in today's game because guys are so fast and, and they're smart as hell too. Yeah, and they're so aware of what's going on around them. Um, the one stat I did want to look at, at least more towards Fabro. Fabro had an even plus minus of zero. He had two shots on goal, uh, or two penalty minutes, a shot on goal, three hits, two block shots. So he was playing defensive hockey, not offensive hockey. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but do you think there could be a possibility of him maybe being sent down to Milwaukee to retool some things at some point this year? If he doesn't get the thing get going, yes. Because he, if he rookie, doesn't, it, so you also got to kind of pump the brakes on the criticism band. But you, but rookies in the NHL are a little more different than rookies in the AHL. He didn't get AHL time, so he's I don't know just, he didn't. He went straight to the big leagues. So that's going to be one knock on him that I'm going to have is he has to prove himself and he has to er, he has to keep fighting because there are guys here in Milwaukee that like deserve to be in the NHL. I agree that that are going to be hungry for that spot. Carrier, Olivier, Donovan, uh, Goudreau. So, um, just a few guys. Uh, the other no notable thing is uh, Roman Yossi had a fight with Mark Stone. Um, Roman Yossi lost. Unfortunately. And then uh, Dan Hamhuis had a, a fight with Max Pacioretty. That fight was like a... I'd say that was even. Um, shots uh, for the first period are 10-18. Second period is 12-9. And then in the third period are 17-8. Um, the first period was the only period that Vegas outshot Nashville, and they got their two goals. Yeah. So, it yeah. was not like they 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 played a pretty solid game after the first period. They basically checked up and said, hey, okay, this is the way they're going to play. This is what we're going to do, and it worked. Yeah, they are basically uh, just feeling them out. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm tired because I was at school all day, but I'm happy. Got here in time to watch uh, two periods of the game. I passed out at around like 7, and then I woke up when he got here, so. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, we I'm, did I'm impressed uh, Nashville is, what, 4-1 this year? Uh, four With their only loss coming from Detroit. Detroit's the only team to beat them. I believe they're either four and one, four and one, or five and one. I know Detroit's the only team to get a victory on them. Where are they? But I just hope the Predators. No, are... they lost on Saturday to the Kings. So they're four and two. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's right. They did lose to the Kings, didn't they? I, forgot. I was trying to block that out of my memory. Because I was all uh, happy that the uh, Admirals beat Lavelle. Um, I am going to take a look. I know it's early in the year, but... Wow, dude, you should be smacked for looking at wild card. Who the hell looks at wild card standings a weekend? That guy, that's who. 
All right, so leading the division is Colorado. They're five and zero. Nashville's four and two. St. Louis is three one and two. Um, Nashville's technically tied for second place, even yeah, though technically. But because Nashville has two regulation, a regulation win and um, a regulation loss, where they only have one regulation loss and two overtime losses, yeah. Nashville's technically in, in second place due to having more regulation wins. <laughs> Edmonton is five and one, and well, for lack of a better term, we'll do this once a week. Uh, wild card is four and three. Uh, wild card teams would be Winnipeg and Cal- Carol- Cal- ah, Calgary. Calgary having issues uh, speaking. Um, teams dead last in the league are as followed. All of them have. Well, there's uh, uh, Minnesota, Minnesota is dead last. last. They're one and five. Dallas is one and five. One five and one. Dallas is. Uh, Chicago is one two and one. And then the Kings are two four and zero, two and four. So yeah, the, literally Chicago, Dallas, and Minnesota are the last, are the wor- three worst teams in the West. Yeah, um, but it's one week in, man. Uh, one week in. Well, who's your soccer? Buffalo's five and zero, but they're gonna cool off. They should still be a playoff team, but I think Buffalo's um, gonna. Carolina's be cool. f- six and one. The Jerks still probably make. The uh, Detroit is currently three and three. That would be a shock if they make the playoffs. Um, Edmonton's five and one, which is a shocker. Come on, Edmonton McDavid. What? I like Connor McDavid. I could call him the Edmonton McDavid's if I want to. Uh, right now they're the Edmonton McNeil or James Neal's because James Neal's been tearing it up. He has yeah. eight goals. Whoa! Here I thought uh, Jack Eichel's having an impressive first week. I suggest you look at your boy Eichel. He does play for your other team, Buffalo. Yeah, I, I was he's, watching. He's playing good. You can't you can't disagree with that. Eichel is dominating right now, but it's only week one. Oh, much love to former prior goalie who is currently the starting goalie over there in Buffalo, uh, Carter Hutton. Yeah, I've I've been paying attention to like everybody in the league. Um, like that, we're just going to do once a week, uh, probably on a Monday, Tuesday, maybe a Sunday. Well, Take we a can't look at the give w- you a specific day, but it will be once a week. Is we'll that just, the only thing we could confirm? Yeah, it'll be once a week. We're going to take a look at the entire league standings. I believe on Friday we're going to do the same for the A or Saturday we're going to do the same for the AHL. Yeah. Saturday or Sunday. Probably Sunday after the Admirals play their last game of the week. Yeah, that's crazy. Milwaukee got three games in a row this week, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And we'll be at two out of three. Yeah, unless I get my refund. <laughs> like you're actually going to go down to Rosemont. I might. You never know. I, I want to because I want to go to as many different hockey arenas as I can. I've never been to the Allstate Arena. Um, I just want to go just to check it out for myself. Um, but Pekka had a good showing. Yeah, um, the, the Great Wall of Nashville doing his thing. Um, by the way, the Predators are the first people to ever hit jackpot in Vegas and walk away with money. <laughs> yeah, but Mark Andre Fleury, I feel bad for him because you um, saw you saw that move plain as day. He tries banking the puck off of the board to his uh, teammate, and yet a Predator intercepted it. I understood why Fleury did it, but that was a rookie mistake, and he paid. I oh. wish we could show everybody here video footage of what we're showing. Because, you know, I'm not trying to get sued by the league or anybody. But, yeah, um, um, I, I feel bad for Flurry. He was a great goalie in Pittsburgh, and then he gets to Vegas. He has, like, one good year, and now, like, the last, last year and this, the beginning of this year, it's kind of iffy. But, yeah, it is what it is. It's hockey. Gotta love it. I'm trying to recap if I have my stats right or not. For what? What stats are you looking for? Uh, the Predators actual schedule. Mm. Because this year I believe they're the only team in the league to score four or more goals in every game. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, they even have four could, against... If you could pull up the Predators schedule, you could find out. 
All right, let's take a look at the scores here. All right, so they had five today. Yeah. Didn't they have like four on Saturday? Because didn't they lose like six four or something like that? Seven to four. Seven to four. Come on, internet, quit working so damn slow. Can you just go to calendar view? Oh. Okay, so they they lost four, seven to four. Um, I'm here. Didn't they play on Thursday? No. What I mean is, click on the Predators schedule in general, then go to calendar view. I can't do that on the internet. I can only do that on the uh, game. They score. Oh yeah, that was the game before the. the yeah, they uh, beat the Capitals six to five. And then. Uh, they played Detroit on... Wasn't that like a Tuesday? Yeah. No, that was... They played the Sharks. That was a 5-2 victory. Yeah, they they won 5-2. And then... I believe... Did it, they play October 3rd? Because uh, the season started October 2nd, I believe the Predators played the Wild October 3rd. Because the Predators and Wild played each other in the first game of the year for the Preds. Oh, they played Friday. Mm. I said the third and the fourth. Well, that was the only game they didn't score four. They yeah, scored they three on five three to Detroit. Yeah, so um, they won five to three against uh, Minnesota. Mm. So the only game they ever lost was against Detroit this season, five to three, against a very much surging Detroit Red Wings team. At yeah, the time. Detroit's surprising, but it's a weekend. Well, talk to me in about two months when uh, Detroit's back to being Detroit. Well, the figure, old Detroit, or um, not the old Detroit, but they're back to being the bad Detroit, not the good Detroit from like five, eight years ago. Mm. All right, so uh, this has been from Milwaukee to Nashville, brought to you by Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue. By the way, for Nashville Predators fans, come over and support the Admirals when the Predators are on the road. Come on up on a weekend, check out an Admirals game for the 50th season. Uh, we've got plenty of promotions going on. Um, I will get to those on, this th weekend. on Thursday's game. Um, this weekend, actually, we have a game on Friday, which is 90s night. Um, they're going to be giving away Velcro wallets. Wait, and that's this Friday already? Yeah. Ooh, I hope I can get 90s uh, t-shirt to work. Um, and then on uh, Saturday, we have dog day. Bring your pup to the to the game. and. Yeah, you have to pay extra for the dog, obviously. I think it's like two or five bucks, but dog day. So... There's yeah, a they play Colorado Eagles. Yep, which is our first time playing them. Yeah. So we're getting treated pretty much early this year with, with teams. Lavelle and now the Eagles. Yep. Oh, yeah, you can visit Hockey Locker at HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. And um, that's all I wanted to say about that. Also, this has been from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Dana Gumo. This is Christopher Traves, and we will see you guys on, this weekend. on Thursday. Thursday. Peace.